Okay, we've got a 2008 Cadillac CTS and having a problem opening the passenger side door from the outside. Uh, this is the model that has the keyless ignition. So unlike conventional doors that are mechanical, uh, when you pull this, there's uh, switches inside the activate actuator that pops the door. And so there's actually two switches inside here and one of them pops the door and the other one uh, unlocks the back doors. Uh, so the idea is if you want to you can just pull this partial way and the door lock has popped open. So that is working but if you'll notice no amount of pulling will let the door open and like I said that's, there's two switches in there and so that means one of the switches uh, has probably malfunctioned. Now there could be other possibilities that cause this and uh, we'll touch on how to test the switches yeah, here in a little while. We're over here on the driver's side uh, so that you can see how it's supposed to function and there's actually an actuator which when you pull on the handle here you can hear the actuator functioning. The silver lining for this project is that there are very few tools required. All that you need is a multimeter, a T25 Torx screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so we've uh, opened the door from the inside, and there's actually uh, only three screws that hold uh, the inner door panel on, which is what we have to remove uh, to get to the micro switches. And I've already <clears throat> kind of loosened everything up, uh, but behind this panel here, there's a plastic bezel that you can pop out. I've already loosened it, and it just pops out after you, after you loosen that up. And there's one of the screws. And this bezel here, you basically just pull off. And there's a screw there. And the third screw there. <clears throat> Magnet is a handy tool to have for this. And that's it. That's really all that holds the panel on besides a bunch of clips. Okay, here's the door with the panel removed. Uh, the great thing about this design is that, except for that locking cable, which I mentioned earlier, the only, all of the other connections uh, are right here. So once you pull the door out, it automatically disconnects them. You don't have a bunch of electrical cables to, to disconnect. So it's just the locking cable that you have to mess with. And so next, in order to gain access to test the switches, we need to peel back the rain shield here, which it's just got some glue type stuff. And if you're careful, you should just be able to rip it back without tearing the liner and leave the glue intact so that you can stick it back in place. And I always get this block cable out of here, just get it out of the way. and. I think it's handy to just take this and fold it back and stick it to itself. Well, there we go. And uh, what we're looking for here is the harness that goes to the switching, or the micro switches. And it should be mounted up in here. And if I remember, it just slides off this clip. Okay, so we've retrieved the harness that goes to the micro switches in the handle. Uh, this piece right here was attached to this clip in the door. That's what held it in place, and that pops loose. And this is what goes down through the door. This other one here is what goes to the uh, harness with the switches. 
uh, this will all be replaced when you replace the switches. And this is where you can test your switches uh, to make sure uh, that one or both of them are bad uh, before you uh, drop a hundred or more dollars in, uh, in in the switch assembly. All right, you can use any old uh, multimeter for this test. Just set it to ohms like I've got here. And as you can see, if we're not getting a circuit, mine looks like this. You might want to see what yours looks like when you're not getting a uh, when you're not getting a completed circuit. And in order to see what kind of uh, results you'll get with a completed circuit, uh, just touch the leads together and that will familiar, familiarize yourself with, uh, with how that works. So you can see how much resistance we're getting here. And that's how we're going to test the doors, or the door switches. So this harness that we've got coming from the door switches, um, there's six wires. The yellow and white uh, are not going to be used for the test. They are for the antenna that goes through the door handle to sense if your uh, key fob is within range. And then you've got two other, or four other wires here, two sets. The red, or I'm sorry, the blue and the orange wire are one switch, and then the gray and the green wire are the second switch. So you're just going to test to see if there's resistance between the blue and the orange, and then a second time between the gray and the green. In order to test it, once you get your leads hooked up, you actually have to pull on the door handle uh, to see if the switch is working. If you pull on the door handle and you get resistance, uh, then the switch is working properly. If you pull on the door handle and the circuit remains open, um, then that switch is malfunctioning. Uh, if either switch are bad, you basically have to uh, replace uh, the whole, what they call the whole housing uh, that comes with the switches and everything. The switches aren't sold by themselves or independent of one another. You have to buy the whole thing. This is the brand new housing assembly that I purchased. And uh, as you can see, it has this same style plug. And you've got the white and uh, yellow wires going to what's going to feed into the door handle antenna. And then the whole reason we're doing this is because of these two little teeny tiny switches right here. And if we get to the focus, there we go. And so uh, that's, what, that's what malfunctions and causes the door not to open, uh, is one of those switches going bad. And uh, this whole assembly fits on the inside of the door. Uh, so now that I have confirmed that one of the switches is bad, um, um, we, we can go ahead and replace this. And the next step is to remove this little rubber plug in the door here. And there is a screw, which probably is not going to show up in the camera, but there is, oh, there it is. There is a screw there that's going to have to be removed next. Okay, we've removed that sh that screw uh, from the side of the door. Make sure that when you when you're getting to the end of the screw, uh, that you reach your hand up inside the door cavity from the inside, and keep that screw from falling out into the uh, into the inside of the door. So basically, that screw has uh, released this piece here. So if you pull on the handle and carefully, that will come out now, and uh, put that aside. After you've done that, next just go up back inside the door and disconnect this little plug from the housing that's for the antenna that goes to the door handle, which the door handle is what we're removing next. I'm not really sure how to best explain how to release the door handle from the internal mechanism. The best thing to do is just get up there and look around with a flashlight and pull on the door handle a few times and kind of get an idea of how, how it works inside there and how it releases. Uh, it involves uh, sort of pulling uh, or pushing the spring to mechanism inward a little bit and pulling the door mechanism out. Uh, it took me a little few tries to figure it out, but it's now released. So I can pull this out and then carefully pull the antenna wire out. And you can see the gasket just fell out. There's gaskets on both sides and uh, these come with, or the, the kit comes with new gaskets. Uh, which you might as well replace. And you can see here there's the uh, wire for the antenna that goes into the door handle. Uh, this is another component of the system that can fail. 
Uh, but in this case, we've already tested the switches and know that they're bad. And you can see the old switches in the door right there. Get a good view of them. And uh, all that all that we lack now is going to be uh, this uh, screw right here, which I can't really get it to focus on very well because of the bright sun. There we go. Yeah, you actually only have to just loosen this screw a little bit and then reach your hand in the door cavity and uh, push the whole housing uh, towards, towards the uh, inside of the car and push this side in a little bit and that will allow the whole assembly to be removed. What I've actually done here is just reassembled the outer handle on the old housing to try to give you an idea of how this functions inside the door since it would be kind of hard to uh, shoot that inside the door there. But when you pull on it, you can see this, I guess, counterweight or uh, counterweight on a spring here is what uh, makes the door handle retract back into the door. Um, so what, what I found to do is just push this back from the inside of the door a little bit and then that'll loosen up the handle. The handle actually slides this way. So if you do that and do it just right, then you're able to get this out and the door handle comes out. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of how that works. So from this point forward, the whole process is basically the reverse of what we've already done. Um, you can see the new housing has a uh, screw already, uh, already installed. And it looks like, uh, silly me, I didn't really have to take this screw all the way out. It looks like if you just back it out uh, to a certain degree that the, uh, that the other piece would have come out. So that, that's going to make the installation a lot easier. Um, so this is the way it should be uh, lining up in the door. So I'm just gonna do this end goes in first with the screw. And this line end lines up behind it. And then just hold it steady and screw in this side. Got brand new gaskets that came with the kit, which we might as well take advantage of. Looks like these little nubs, clips go onto the inside of the door to keep it in place while you're working. You can see that little clip there. And that's it, we are ready to reinstall the door handle. Just feed this wire back through the door. And just hinges in like that. Pull back up on that, or pull back down on that counterweight. And it snaps in like that. Takes a little bit of finagling to figure out exactly how that goes. But at the end, should have a functioning door handle switch again and uh, you'll notice that they've already applied a generous amount of the, the white grease to the new housing so that's one thing you don't have to rush out and get and it already feels better uh, than the previous setup did. So now we're just going to reinstall this piece here. Remember you've got to pull on the door handle to get it to insert and now it's in place and we simply tighten up the screw inside the door.
All right, next, let's put the plug back in the side of the door. And let's go ahead and plug our antenna back in. And we'll just go ahead and plug the harness back together, clip it back up to the door. Uh, the harness does have a, another clip up in the door that it goes to to keep it out of, way, out of the way of the, of the uh, uh, window here. So make sure that all gets clipped up nice and neat where the window won't catch it when you roll it down. Okay, we've got the door all pieced back together now. And now it's time to cross our fingers and test it. I actually haven't tried it yet. Go ahead and close the door and wait for the car to automatically lock itself. There we go. And moment of truth. That's it. That's how it's supposed to work.